Hello, hello, and happy Funfold Friday, everyone. How are you? Oh, wow. So uh, did you know Hanukkah will be here in a week? <laughs> For those of you who have some uh, wonderful Jewish friends that you would like to send a Hanukkah card to. We do have a special stamp set for that, but um, even if you don't have the stamp set, today's fun fold is going to be perfect. It is the Star of David fun fold. Um, it's also called the Origami Star, uh, but it's fairly simple to make, but you do need a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, or you could use the designer paper to make the card base. Um, however you want to do it. But anyways, I'm using white 12 by 12 cardstock. And yes, we do sell 12 by 12. <laughs> I know it's an odd uh, measurement for card makers, but we do have some scrapbookers in our group. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're doing Star of David today. Um, let's see who's in the house. We've got Luana and Allie and Kay and Tony and Darlene. Hello, you all. Thank you all so much for showing up so bright and early in the morning. And it is a beautiful December 1st. Oh my gosh. Yes, it is December. Um, you know what? I totally forgot. I, I have the overlay. I forgot to put it on here. Hold on. Give me two seconds. Downloads. There it is. Hopefully that works. And yay, the December host code. So we do have a new month of December. For those of you who ordered from me, if you have not received your 12 Christmas card tutorials, um, please email me because I've sent them out. So um, I don't want them to go to your spam folder or to be blocked somehow. Um, I want you to get that if you ordered from me in November. Okay. Um, one more thing about December, and that is the new December card kit that I created. Did you all get your email yesterday? I sent it out. Oh, no, this morning. It went out this morning at 8 a.m. Uh, there was also a YouTube video showing it. But if you did not see it, let me, um, well, first of all, let's get all this stuff out of the way. There we go. Here is the cards. And um, I'm so excited about these cards because they're fun fold cards, this card kit. So here they are. This is the card kit for December. And if you did not get the email with the information, please send me a message. Let me get my email up here for you. Hold on. There it is. Uh, my email, you can just send me a message and say, I want information about the December card kit. Okay. And, um, and this one's the spanner. Uh, panel fold. I love this one. So I give you everything you need to make the cards. The only thing that's not included is the stamp set, but this card kit uh, lends itself to using any nature card uh, stamp set. So, uh, but I'm using the new uh, feathered flight that's in the online store. Okay. So that is that. We are making a Star of David. So you ask me, what the heck is a Star of David card? Well, let me show you. This is the Star of David card. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. And this is how it opens. You just pull it. <laughs> just pull the, the pieces open. And there we go. And it says, celebrate the miracle. Okay. And then to fold it back, you just put these down. And then you do like a box fold. Um Hold on, let me make sure I get this right. That is, it's going to box fold this way. Okay. I never remember which way the box fold goes. And then it's done. Now, this is a six by seven card. It's six inches long and seven inches tall. Um, so you'll have to get a large envelope or you, if you've got an envelope maker, you can custom make an envelope for it. And it will cost extra postage also because it is a large card. But anyways... That's what we are going to make today. You guys ready? All right, let's get the comments going. If you do have a question, please put a question mark in front so I can find your question as I scroll through. And like I said, you're going to need a 12 by 12. And I zoomed out as far as I could uh, and I barely got enough room. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to uh, create a 12 inch equilateral triangle. And the way we do that also... Uh, the instructions are going to be on the blog, and later today I will send out an email with the downloadable, <clears throat> excuse me, downloadable uh, tutorial um, with pictures of all of this. So, first of all, you need to find the six-inch mark 
And so you just get your ruler and I have an 18 inch ruler here, but a 12 inch of course would work. Um, and you find the six inch mark and then you just make a light pencil line about two inches down so that you'll pass where the equilateral triangle will connect here. Um, you basically, what you're doing is you're trying to get where the tip of the triangle will be. And then you take your 12 inch ruler and you start from the corner down here and you go up and turn it sideways so you can see and get this piece out. Um, you go up 12 inches like that. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, what we're doing. So I've got to make it. Let's do this. And I need my scoring tool. I found the scoring tool helps also uh, when doing this. So first of all, I can find the center of the 12 by 12 uh, right there. And I'm getting the blade out of the way. I don't want the blade. And I'm doing a score mark down to about two inches. Um, that It's the same as a pencil mark. I just need to know where to stop my 12 inch line. So then I get my ruler out, okay, and I get a pencil, and you want a, a light pencil, and then put the zero mark right there on the corner, okay, right there, and then get the 12 inch right here on the score line, okay, and then just draw yourself a line, and then do it again on the other side, okay, and of course the bottom's already 12 inches, so you don't have to worry about that. And we're going to put the zero mark there and the 12 inch mark on the corner. Okay, there, whoops, there we go. Okay, now we have an equilateral triangle. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And now my trimmer barely, this barely fits in the trimmer. So if you've got a larger, like you've got a cutting mat and a cutting blade, that might be easier. Um, but what I'm going to do, let's see, I did this earlier. How did I do this? Um, I can't remember how I did this now. Um, oh, I know what I did. I cut this part off. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what did I do? Okay, so now I need to be careful not to get the point of my triangle in there. Okay, and I can feel where the groove is. There we go. Now I can get it in my trimmer. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. Now, um, we're just going to line that up. And um, it's easier when I have it closed because I can see through where the, the pencil mark through the, the groove here. There we go. Da -da. And then this side. Okay. Make sure it's even. It is. There we go. All right. So there's my equilateral triangle. There it is. Now this, all of this is scrap. So just put that to the side. Everybody still with me? Hello, Georgina from England. How are you? And Mallory and Jay and Janet and Angie and V and Lynn, Marie. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Next thing we need is to mark each side at four, at six, and at eight. Oh, you know, I forgot to put these. Um, I always write the descriptions down at the bottom. Hold on. I didn't do that this time. I can do that real quick, though. Create a banner. Um, create 12-inch equilateral triangle. Okay. And then the next one is uh, mark each side at four inches, six inches, and eight inches. All right. There we go. And show. There we go. All right. So let's do that. Get my ruler back out. And I'm just going to put that on there. Um, now, if you've got grid paper, um, this could be easier that way. And I know my 12 inch right there. My one inch. All right. And then, it's, you know what? It, it would be easier to do it this way. So I can mark on the paper. There we go. Whoops. Come here.
Okay. So at the four, at the six, and at the eight. Where's eight? There's eight. This is hard to see on this metal ruler. Um, and it wants to go underneath the ruler, too. Oh, that's not exactly 12 inches. Okay. Four, six, and eight. And then the last one. And you do want a light pencil because you're going to want to erase this, these marks. Um, so they don't show when you put the card together. All right, and four, six, and eight. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna score parallel lines on each point of the triangle. So let me make that score. Par this is a math lesson this week, parallel. <laughs> lines on each point, a uh, triangle point. There we go. All right, so I'm going to get our scoring tool. Now make sure that blade's out of the way. You do not want to cut it or we'll have to start all over. Now just get this in here and then get the two pencil marks inside uh, the scoring track there. There we go. And then there we go. And we just do this on all three sides. Has anyone ever made one of these before? I think they're so cool. Like I said, I have a very dear friend. Um, she's in my book study on Wednesdays. And um, she and uh, her family, they're Jewish. And uh, they're just, she's just the sweetest, most wonderful lady. And I am so excited to give this to her on Wednesday. All right, so now that I've got my triangle, and I see if you can, yeah, you can see the score lines. So you have two parallel lines on each point, creating a triangle in the center, and then these sections. And how this works, um, before we do all of the thing, we need to make some templates, okay, um, for our designer paper. So make vellum. And I use vellum because you can see through it. Make vellum templates for DSP. What does DSP stand for? Designer series paper. You know, stamping up. We have the funniest uh, terminology, don't we? All right. So these are my vellum. So what I did is I just stuck my vellum paper on here. Let me grab a piece of vellum paper. Show you what I did. Come on. Okay, so I just took this vellum paper and I could see through to mark the triangle. And of course, I use one edge of the vellum paper. So to save some spots, save some space. Yeah, so I just lined it up on the edge there and then just made a pencil mark right there and right here. And I just cut that triangle out and I have this here. Okay, so I, I only need one of them, okay? Then the trapezoid, there we go, another math word for you. A trapezoid is not a parallelogram. Remember, parallelograms, uh, these two sides would be going the same direction. So this is a trapezoid. You've got them coming in. Anyways, <laughs> so this piece came from right there. So there you go, and you've got... Now, if you want... A piece of designer paper for the center, um, you'd make that template also, but I'm not, I'm not doing that because I have white here. All right, here we go. Um, now that I've got that, this is how this folds together. So it goes in and back. All right. And then this one goes in and back. Okay. And then in and back. And this, that's all there is to it. Then you go down, down, and then box box fold. I call it a box fold because that's how 
when you have a box and you tuck it in like that. Now, if it doesn't fit snug, I mean, if it doesn't like, it's kind of like wonky, then force it in place and get your bone folder. Okay. And straighten out all of the lines. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yay. Now it works. Cool, huh? <laughs> all right, let's make this. So um, I took the, I'm using, okay, first of all, this one I used the countryside in paper. I loved it. It has the little birds on it and the beautiful um, kind of a floral foliage type stuff. And I just love the blues. I just thought that was a real pretty paper. But this time I decided I'm going to use the winter, excuse me, winter meadow. Now, um, Hanukkah is blue and silver. And it's more of this blueberry blue than it is navy. But, um, you know, it's, it's the color of blue that's on the Israel flag. Um, but it really doesn't matter. It's kind of like Christmas. We have green and gold, I mean, green and red for Christmas. Well, we also have pink and turquoise. We have <laughs> all kinds of colors. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but I do like to try to stay traditional as, as much as possible. So here we go. Um, I've cut all the pieces out except these last two. All right. So when you trace, so when you trace this piece on here, okay. It's not go. It's going to fit on here, but it's going to be so snug um, that it's going to be difficult to fold the card. So you do need to trim it down a wee bit. Now, um, I didn't want to trim it down too much, but enough so I could get folds. So I wrote this down. You're going to trim the triangle down a quarter inch just off one side. Okay, just one side, and it keeps it a quarter. I mean, it keeps it an equilateral triangle. All right, so just the one side. All right, so let me get my trimmer out and I'll do that. I've already done it to the other pieces, but so I just get this in here and I go to the quarter inch. Whoops, come here. There we go. And cut that off. Okay, so now it's the size of a triangle for the card. And the trapezoid has two uh, different measurements. The first measurement is, whoops, you can't see that. Sorry, let me pull that down. I can't sit there either. There we go. How about there? There we go. Uh, an eighth of an inch from the long side. Okay, so here's the long side and an eighth of an inch. Now, if you've got eighth of an inch markings on your scoring tool, that's very helpful. If not, just eyeball it. It's just basically just cut a little bit off. Okay. There we go. Just, just a wee bit. Not very much. But the sides here, you need a little bit more. So I have a quarter inch off of one. You only need one side because they are, uh, it's, it stays even. Okay. The angle stays the same. That's what I'm trying to say. All righty. So now I've got all my pieces cut out and I'm ready to put my triangle together. Now I have um, three triangles and let me put that down. Creek cut three triangles and six trapezoids. You're going to need six because of the backside. When you fold it together, um, the you see this section. This is the back. So that's the back of the card and you want to have paper there. I mean, you could leave it that way and it would just leave it white and it would just look like a white um, star back behind a colored triangle. But um, I just thought it looked prettier with the paper. So here we go. Um, get out some liquid glue. Is everyone still with me? Check my comments. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Looks like everybody's just saying good morning. Oh, good. I'm glad you're getting to watch it live, Lynn. It's nice to see you here this morning. Awesome. Okay. Allie, your husband's coming home. Oh, praise the Lord. After 10, I know it's been a hard time for you. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Okay. And hello, Joyce. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you all, Joyce has a YouTube channel. Um, and uh, she has a couple of videos up there. I've been watching them. Um, I need, I was going to call her. Yeah, I was going to call you yesterday, Joyce, and I 
didn't get around to it, but I did watch your videos and I, I have a few. You did an awesome job. Can't wait to talk to you about it. But anyways, the rest of you all um, watch her videos and um, yeah, help help us stamp her out. <laughs> all right, let's get this together. So um, here we go. All right. Now on this, I'm putting the blue side. On the back, I'm going to put the design side. Okay. So um, go. And also I found um, it doesn't matter if you have directional paper or not, because you can turn the paper. Um, it, it's an equilateral triangle. So no matter which way you turn it, it's still going to fit in its spot. Okay. Um, now the trapezoid, however, it's only one direction. So if, if, if you want all your lines going the same way, um, just be careful when you're cutting it out that you cut the DSP out the way you want it. All right, there's that one. Almost done. Whoops. And Oh, Joyce, put your YouTube channel um, in the comments for everyone. Katie wants to know what your channel is. And I know our um, our friend Maria Battistini, she has one also, Maria's Craft Room. Um, I'm not sure if she's here this morning. I didn't see your name, Maria, but um, you all can watch her videos too. Like I said, watch all of the videos and, and, you know, comment and like them and share them, you know, help us stamp her out. <laughs> what is it? What? I always forget how the saying goes. Um, the rising tide lifts all ships or something like that. Anyways. Okay. Um, so we have this star of David here. Okay. Like this. But notice how it's white there. And actually, I mean, that doesn't look bad. I just, I would like for it to have the designer paper here also. So it needs to be put on the back. All right. So we're going to put this on the back. Uh oh. Oh no. Ah, where is it? Of course it fell, right? Oh, where are you? Where are you? Hmm. Oh, I had all the pieces here. <laughs> okay, I'll find it. Hold on. Okay, it's not in. Yeah, it's not on the bottom. Oh, good grief. Uh, once again, losing my brain. I'm going to have to cut out another one, I guess. All right. No biggie. I've got more paper. I just wish I didn't have to because I, I know I had it cut. Now I am going to... That's not going to fit there. All right. So we'll have to use this side. Okay. There we go. Oh, where's my pencil? Now oh, y'all get to watch me cut another piece out. I know it's probably right in front of me. Isn't that the way it always is? <laughs> there we go. Ooh, 
Ooh, I'm a little shaky this morning. Oh, by the way, you guys, I didn't tell you. So, uh, you know, I get my blood taken every three months to keep an eye on my thyroidism, my hyperthyroidism. Um, I have basically what I have is uh, thyroiditis, Hashimoto's, um, but it's usually high. And the last time I had my blood taken, she said my antibody count was way up. And um, what the problem with antibodies is, is it's my body is attacking. You know, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. And uh, antibody count is telling me that my body is really attacking itself. Um, so she said, I need to know what you have in your diet. And I was telling her everything. She said, corn, absolutely no corn. Well, I knew absolutely no gluten. And so a lot of gluten-free things have corn because, you know, corn doesn't have gluten in it. Well, she said, nope, no corn either. No corn products, no popcorn, no corn chips, no corn oil, <laughs> no corn. Like, great. So I followed her instructions down almost to nothing. I was so happy. So here's my diet. No gluten, no corn, no dairy, um, no peanuts. Oh, come on. There's um, no dairy, no peanuts, no corn, no gluten, and no sugar. But sugar is so hard to stay away from. Oh, my gosh. Oh. But I have had a lot of sugar, and it didn't affect my antibodies numbers, so that was good. But the corn definitely was bad, so I'm happy about that. Okay, got my, my other traps. Oh, I saw a question. I saw a question. C Carla says, I turned in a bit late. Will this fit in a... No, it will not, Carla. You've got to have... It is six inches by seven inches when it's all folded together. So you're going to have to either make a custom envelope or find a big envelope to put it in if you're going to mail it. And it will cost extra postage because it's so big. Now, um, if you want, you could make it a smaller equilateral triangle. This is a 12 by 12, uh, 12 inch. If you made it a 10 inch, um, then your sides would only be five inches here. I'm not sure what size card that would be, um, but it, it would just be a littler one. Um, yeah, you could make it 10 inch by 10 inch and then uh, see what happens. But this is the one that I saw mostly online. And so I took this one. You know, because that's how I, I find fun folds for you guys. <laughs> I, I scour the Internet and uh, I try to find new ones that I haven't done or that I haven't seen before. Um, and I had seen this one. Oops, I cut that one too big. On Ooh, you know what? I cut that a quarter inch. OK, you guys, um, I cut this one on the quarter inch on this long side instead of eighth. And you can see it really made it small, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay, let's fold this up. So, so you just go in and then the one next to it. And then this third one gets tucked in like that. Okay, like that. All right. Oh, no, it doesn't look bad at all. Okay, so in the back, you know, where it's showing. So that's the Star of David. Now, let's decorate it. Y'all ready to decorate it? I have... Okay. Oh, there it is. Phew. I was like, I already cut the circles out. I'm using our deckled circles. Okay. And I've got the blueberry bushel cardstock here. And I have the um, Celebrate the Miracle stamp set. How we doing? Awesome. Awesome. Everybody's doing good. Oh, there's Yvonne from my favorite island. <laughs> um. I don't know if it's my favorite island, but I just think it's cool that I got to go buy it when I was on my way to Norway. <laughs> Isle of Wight. I don't know. Are You are on the Isle of Wight, right? I can't remember. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. <laughs> Whew, I'm such a goof. All right. I need my blueberry bushel ink. Okay. Go ahead and get all my inks. I'm going to do blueberry bushel and I'm going to do crumb cake. I like crumb cake because it's kind of like gold. And then... Um, Daffodil Delight for the flames on the candle. I'm going to put the candelabra in, inside my card. All right, let's do this. So my Star of David on the front. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. 
that away for a sec and open my card back up. Okay. To the side. And um, celebrate the miracle. I need my long. This does not fit on a D size. I need a longer one. Oops, I closed up my blueberry. I need it back. Okay, here we go. Celebrate the miracle. <sighs> Perfect. I like it when it's stamped straight and without any splotches. All right, the next one I need is the candelabra. The menorah. I should call it by its correct name, the menorah. <laughs> And like I said, crumb cake is kind of like gold. I mean, it's not shimmery or anything, but it's like that shade of gold. Now, remember, this is going to have candles, so don't go too far up. There we go. And then the candles back to the blueberry bushel. Where are the candles? Here are the candles. Go ahead and get the Star of David off of there. And the candles fit on the D-size block at an angle. Wow. Oh, <sighs> Glad that didn't have ink on it. That would have been a sad, sad affair. <sighs> now, excuse my head. I'm going to have to lean over so I get my candles right on the candle holders. Without leaving too much of a gap. Huh? It's a little bit of a gap, but it still looks okay. All right. There's that. And clean that off so I can use that same block for my flames. And then Daffodil Delight. We're almost done. We just have to put the star on. Now, don't forget... If you did not get your email this morning, the December cards, card kit by mail is available right now. And it is a fun fold card kit. So it's four different fun folds. I'll show it to you again in just a sec. Um, it's four different fun folds and you'll get enough material to make eight. So two of each. Um, the, I have three pricing options. You can get it with just uh, the kit stuff cut out and sent to you, or you can get the kit and you can add the stamp set on if you would like, um, or third, you can just get the tutorial. Okay, so there is our Star of David. We need one more thing, and that is to put this on, the Star of David. So let me tuck, I always forget which way to go. This way, it's this way. <laughs> There we go. Tuck that in there. Now, this is kind of tricky. It's not, I mean, it's not tricky. It's just you need to uh, be watchful. That's what I'm trying to say. And that is we are going to glue this blueberry bushel circle onto the Star of David card, but we are only going to get it on one triangle side because we want it to not get in the way of the tuck. Okay. So I put it up on dimensionals. Now you could put some, ah! You can put some twine behind there, some bling on there, whatever. But I would advise you to use glue because this is going to be really um, handled a lot when you're opening and closing it, okay? And it doesn't matter which way you put your Star of David on because it's symmetrical no matter which direction it goes. So now if you want it at the top, kind of look inside your card. Okay, so that is my candelabra is right here. So I'm going to glue it to this side. It doesn't matter though. Now I've just got to make sure that I only get glue on this section right here. Nowhere else. All right. Come on. There we go. And a good amount of it because we want it to stick and stay. Now let me hold that for a minute while I scroll through and make sure I haven't missed any other questions. Awesome. Okay. I do not see any other questions. Very good. Very good. It is the 1st of December. I'm so excited. And no, we still don't have our tree up. 
but it will be, a, a, I don't know if the tree will get up, but I have some ladies coming over tonight to do a kit together. <clears throat> so I do want to get my bathroom at least decorated. Um, I had great glorious plans this weekend to get all decorated for Christmas and it just didn't happen. You know how that goes, right? Okay, there we go. And happy Hanukkah, you guys. Now, don't forget um, the the um, instructions are on um, the website. Let me get my website up here. Where is my website? There it is. Oh, it's my blog. Um, so you can find them there or you can wait later this afternoon. I'm going to be sending out an email with a downloadable that you could print off that will have all the instructions and the templates. Um, I think that's it. Um, you all have a blessed wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you again on Monday evening for another card tutorial. I love, this is, this is my job. This is what I do. It's just the best job in the world, sharing with you all how to make beautiful cards. So y'all have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>